Okay, so self inquiry. So self inquiry is essentially um, is the process of inquiring into the nature of the true self through an inquiry process. And uh, the way I liken it is to see, and I'm speaking to you, but I'm also speaking to everybody and to everyone who's listening, is to, in this specific moment, you take a reading of what is being experienced. So we can do it in a general way and, and with, with you personally. Um, so everyone right now is like, what am I experiencing? What am I experiencing in this moment that, that seems to be limited or contracted? So you want to take a reading, a live reading in this moment. What is being experienced is limited and contracted. And that's how you take a reading of what your current experiencing is, or your current experiencing of limitation is in this moment. Now here's, here's the thing with self-inquiry. One of the things to recognize is that, mm, is that, is to get the awareness of is one a object or is one the observer of all objects. Now if you're experiencing anything that's limited right now in your experiencing field, then for most people who are heavily identified with that object, uh, it, the experience is as if that object is self. You see? Now, uh, uh, now here's the thing. To, now, to get clarity on the self-inquiry process, I, I always use my mug metaphor, which is my favorite metaphor. Now, a mug, to most people, is a neutral or a meaningless or a quite unremarkable object, i.e. there's no great fascination or obsession or it's not usually the most interesting object in the room. It's kind of a boring, neutral, usually a, a quite a neutral or meaningless object. Now for most people observing this mug, it's like, it seems to be that is at, there's absolute clarity that you are not the mug. It seems to be an object with a great distance. There seems to be huge detachment from it. And if I was to say to a person, just when I'm holding up a mug, are you a mug? Mm. They would say no, that, <laughs> I, I see the mug over there. You know, only like a mug addict who's really obsessed with mugs might get confused and think they are the mug, the object that is being observed because they're so enmeshed and identified with it that it seems there's no space. It seems to be something that's out there. It seems to be them. Okay, but I think with nearly every human being, they wouldn't get confused that they'd have a detached space and they'd be witnessing or observing the mug and there'd be absolute clarity, they are not the mug. They are the observer of the mug, but the mug has got nothing to do with the essence of what they are. Now, that... Uh, you're nodding, so I'm assuming you, you agree you're not a mug. <laughs> so that's good. That, so hence, so we have now self-inquired together and, and agreed that we are not mugs. The mug is being observed. And there's a lot of space. You know, it's very, very clear. The mug is not me. Okay. So now self-inquiry then is the process of investigating everything that seems to be limited and one has identified as me and seeing is it really me or is there something or is there awareness or observing or witnessing of that which then will clearly show that it was a false identification just like it would be a really ridiculous idea to say just because I observe a mug I am the mug mm. I mean, that's quite a ridiculous thing to most humans. They'd say, well, I can see very clearly the mug is not me. I'm observing the mug. It's over there. I mean, I, I, I'm definitely not a mug. So, but now we go, we need to inquire through contemplation or through the inquiry process, which is not... Uh, here, here's the next thing. Well, I'll talk a little bit on thoughts, because thoughts is a major thing. A lot of people are very, what I call, hooked into, or identified, or enmeshed, 
or find thoughts very interesting. And when you speak to, speak to them, they say, I am my thoughts. I am thoughts. Thoughts is me. But we need to, we need to now inquire into it. Now, in order to inquire into, am I my thoughts, or is there observing of thoughts, and thoughts are just the same as mugs, got nothing to do with me, they're just witness to come and go and pass by. To experience the witnessing of thoughts, you cannot think of, you cannot try and understand it or intellectualize around it, because you'll still be using your thinking, and your thinking cannot be, cannot, you cannot use your thinking to be that which is observing thinking, mm -hmm. you see. Now a lot of people are so entrenched in their thinking that is there something observing all your thoughts passing? They'll try and think about it and try and understand what's being said or try to visualize. But actually none of that would work, you see. So it's like another, another uh, thing to recognize is if anything can change or pass before you, can you be that thing? Yeah. So it's like if a thought can come into field and be there and then pass away, can you be that thought? Or are you that in which, are you the space which is observing the thought come and go and then disappear? And, you, and the thought is not you, you see? So with everything I'm saying, I'm not really talking to the intellectual mind, but it's like, is there something which is here, which is observing all thoughts pass and is not a thought, and is always here. Um, you can respond if you want to. You're asking me that question. Okay. I'm Are asking. you asking me that question? I, let's say I'm asking you that question. I'm not sure of the answer. Okay, only the, only the ego cannot be sure, only the thinking okay. cannot be sure. So, all right, so let's get, let's get direct to it then. So what's your experience now? In this moment? Yeah. In this moment I feel calm. Okay. Is there any feeling of being contracted or limited in any way in this moment? Not calm or limited. That's it. So you don't don't pick anything up that's limited or contracted or get hooked into anything. And the eternal state is beyond time. You, there's no tracking of time. There's no awareness of the limits of the body. Mm. There is uh, just, if, it can be described in many ways, eternal stillness, uh, limitless peace, presence, beyond time. And the only, the only time that changes and becomes more limited is if anything that's limited gets hooked into. Like the body gets hooked into, mm. a thought gets hooked into. If a picture or a memory gets hooked into, then this limitless presence, this timeless stillness, suddenly contracts down. And, and self-inquiry is just unhooking, detaching, and seeing that these are being witnessed, and then releasing the hook, and then you experience the, eter the eternal. And it, no understanding is necessary. In fact, understanding is not necessary. <laughs> It's tricky if you th if you hook into your thoughts. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm.